that's only achieved by, by that, that, that hammer on. You can't get that with a tune. So the other day, uh, Charlie came over to talk about 817 Oakland Avenue because apparently a whole mess of you have been asking about that. So here we go. Uh, in this video, we'll talk about everything that makes this song unique from the picking pattern to the chords to the guitar he used to this little contraption here, which makes the song possible. Now, going off of other videos I've done with Charlie in the past, I know there's gonna be a whole mess of you asking for tab in the comments, but Charlie and I are actually gonna break down kind of how we actually learn songs, why we don't use tab, and, and why there definitely can't be tab for this one. But don't worry, I will be injecting myself into the video at random times to break down some of the big concepts at a slower clip for you. So this is 817 Oakland Avenue. Let's start with what are what are you talking about? What, what am I talking about? I'm talking about a, this is a partial capo. Okay. As opposed to a regular capo that covers all the strings, this is this is designed specifically to cover three strings, and it's and it's designed in such a way that it will cover three strings and still hold on to the neck of the guitar. When I got it, I just like picked a place on the guitar and clamped it down. Yeah. To see what it would do. You know, and what I could do with, you know, here it is over here. But I landed on this second fret, you know, on those three strings. Oh, uh, it's just so beautiful. Because it's all, it, it is a recognizable chord. Yeah. And when you play, when you play regular chords at the position where you'd normally play the chord with a full capo, you get you get that that extra span of the fretboard when you do hammer on it. Right. And that that turned into the song. All right, so let me show you this thing. This is a partial capo and it would not be possible to play 817 without it. Without without it you just wouldn't have the the right character. Uh, I'll show you I'll show you what I mean. So, you just sticks it here on second fret and uh when you play that open, uh, it, it makes kind of like an E sus chord. So there's there's no real third in the chord right now um, until you play this nice D shape. So there you go. And so what's happening here is this open E is ringing freely at the nut, and it's almost like drop D in a, in a way. But what's different is this E also rings freely at the nut, and so does this B string. So that's something you can't really get with drop D. You, you don't get this extension of the fingerboard. So anyway, you can play this D shape here, and then you can also play this kind of A7 shape here, and then you've got this G shape. So those are the three chords of the entire song. And that's all fine and dandy, but where it really gets interesting is what Charlie actually does with it melodically in the tune. I this, love that hammer That on, is though. so cool. But you can't get that hammer on with, a, with an open tuning. You're playing a G with that 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 yeah. fret? Yes. Oh, it's the same note. Yeah, see? Ah! Oh. <laughs> it just it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> Alright, this part though. To me that's kind of the hook. Ba, ba, ba. A. A. G. It's kind of hard to get your bass bases through that. That would take some work. Well, that's why we're here. I need to see you. <laughs> so let me just show you each part once here. And if you need a refresher, just keep playing back the tape. But uh, so here's this high part. You take this minor third shape way up here. And so that's off of the uh, seventh and ninth fret. And then you're going to bring that back to the fifth and seventh fret. And then you just go back to your D shape. And then you've got an A chord here, and then a G chord. He's playing technically an A7 shape. 
uh, for this chord, but he's not actually hitting that 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 dominant note. So it would sound fine if he did, but just something to know. It is an A7 chord, but it's not really acting that way. Challenge for me was actually could I could I play this with with moving basses? And so one way to do it is actually on the first chord, pinching with your thumb on the fourth string, and then pinching in between your thumb motions on that next chord. I'll show you what it means. So six, pinch on the fourth and the, that first chord. Six, second chord, fourth string. And then pinch on the sixth string in the, the D chord shape. And then you're gonna do a nice big thumb on the A chord before you move to that G chord. Two things about that G chord, make sure you do this little hammer on. And he also seems to kind of gravitate towards this chord that, that blew my mind where uh, you got your pinky on the fifth, technically the fifth fret, which is a unison with that open E string. Which is so cool. I mean, that that just that is like impossible to do with without without this capo. Let me just play this whole high part once. I love that A7 chord with that dissonant note in it. That's gonna come back in this low part here. So let me show you this low part. So good. So we've got we've got a D chord to this A7 shape to a G. Uh, the G he seems to use on, on this part is actually a G that has his pinky on the E string. Again, I don't know how strict he is with this kind of thing because, you know, Accordion Charlie songs are, are never done being written, but um, just, just going off of what seems to be the most common for him right now uh, is this G. And it's kind of cool to mess around with that, um, you know, accurate or not to what he's doing because you actually create this G like nine chord. So just a really colorful sound. Again, a sound that would not be possible. Uh, at least very easily uh, without this without this cool partial capo. So what makes this part so cool is the hammer-ons. Um, and it's the way that open string rings through the chord. I just love it. As far as moving basses, you know, I'm kind of just starting on that low E string. And he's really consistent about like slamming those like it's like a bell. One thing to mention though, there is one main difference from the recording Charlie did uh, on his Folkways release um, from the from the one I've just showed you. And it's, it's a huge difference. And it's a difference that if you add to the song, you will sound even closer to the recording than, than I am currently sounding. Because this is the guitar that I think he actually used on the on the Folkways recording. Uh, I can't be sure, I, I, I actually should, should ask him, but the, uh, I could ask him right now. Did you record with the Fralini 12 on 817 for the Folkways? release okay we'll see if he answers if he answers that but this used to be charlie's guitar and uh, i have recently uh acquired it and uh i'm feeling really really grateful about it this is a fraulini 12 string that um todd cambio made with his son felix i think it's the first guitar those two did together so it's, it's a super special guitar i can talk more about it in like maybe another video um if you're if you're new to 12 strings at all you, you should actually watch the video i did with todd albright um, it's all about 12 string guitars. It's like 20 minutes long and you'll learn more than than you ever needed to know about 12 strings and, and Todd's Todd's opinions <laughs> about them. But um, anyway, Charlie recorded 817 on a 12 string. And I don't know if this is what he did, but this is what I would have to do to play it. And so you thought the partial capo was weird. Well, this is really weird because these are tuned low. Like that's a C. And you can tune these things up, and, and maybe he did for the recording, but um, 
but I am going to do this. I'm going to play with two capos. <laughs> so that's an E. Yep. So that's our E. And then this. This is. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's what I would do. That's what I would do to play with the 12 string. Oh. Yeah, that was the only 12 I played on the record. Okay, so he played, uh, this was the actual guitar that he played on 817. So I'll just play it once here and uh, I don't know, it should sound, sound kind of like the record. So as I mentioned, there's, there's not going to be any tab for this, but um, I hope these little videos would be helpful for you. Um, if tab is something that, that is kind of a necessary thing for you, um, I hope this little dialogue here at the end will, will help you kind of frame your mind about, you know, why tab doesn't always work the best for finger style guitar, especially, especially when you use something as weird as, as this. <laughs> I had somebody ask me to uh, tab out the 1922 version that we did. And I did it because they paid me ten dollars to do it. Did I tell you about this? No. It was so hard. Was it? Your shit's crazy. No, it's not. Yeah, I couldn't. I was like, this is hard. No. <laughs> it really was. That doesn't make any sense in my head. I'll show you the tab. I don't want to see the it's, tab. It's freaky. No, I don't want to see. That. There's things about it. I was like, didn't know he did that. I, I didn't want to know. No, I didn't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, that's the thing. When you ask people that people. Seeing this stuff in tab form, or tabbing it out, like I, 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 I like meeting people where they are and offering tab if that's what works. Mm -hmm. But it's it's almost like asking somebody to like, will you type out my sentence? Like if we typed out our conversation, it wouldn't look very eloquent. It would just look like oh, no, of course not. No. Right? You, you you type different than you talk, and tabs yeah. kind of like that. Like oh. when you write things out, yeah. it's like. You can get the shape, but it's right. not really how it was played. Right. It, I don't know how to read tab, but I, I assume that it doesn't like have a way to notate dynamics. No. Well, that's the thing. You can get as crazy as you want with tab. I think tab's best. Tab with finger style is just really hard, but with yeah. other forms, fiddle tunes, right. banjo, just the big notes. It's up for your musicality to add the rest of that stuff. Right. When you tab right. all that stuff out, it's just. Well, that's the way I've always I've, I've been an ear learner all my Me life. Too. My strategy ever since I was a kid, my first started trying to learn how to play the guitar, was to play along with the record until I got the chords. Yeah. And once I got the chords, I would turn off the record. Yeah. And then the song is playing in my head now. I think that's perfectly related to what we're talking about, where if you have the tab. These are supposed to be all the answers. And there's a certain part of your creativity that shuts off because you're trying to read the page. Right, right. When you're an ear learner, it's all creativity. And you're like, I th I'm approximating that at this, and I, I know that I am because it's coming from me. Totally. Yeah. When you're reading, it's like, I'm not approximating. I am doing this thing verbatim. And I think you could, as an ear learner, I think you could go all the way and just never stop listening and yeah. get it down the way the record is. I've done that with certain songs. I want to play it the way the record was. Same. And I've gone through the whole thing and just every note, stop the record, mm -hmm. get the note, stop the record, get the note. Most of the time I don't do that. Most of the time I'm like, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get the basics down and then I'm gonna, you know, just comp out the rest according to my own personality. Yeah. Which is which is the lesson that I got from Spider John Kerner, you know? Right. Who just like you know get the basics and then inject your Spider John into it, right? You know, if you want to see that tap for 1922 Blues, it is over on the Patreon, along with a slow playthrough of 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 the tune. So if you haven't seen that video either, it's a 
it's here. You can go ahead and watch it. It's like a three-minute run-through. Uh, Taught to me from, from Charlie Parr. So, And if that's too fast for you, um, you can go ahead and join up on the Patreon at the, uh, at the dusty level. Okay, and that's going to get you that. That tab plus like a dozen other other folk guitar tabs. So, all right, all right then. <laughs> we'll see you there. <laughs>